which is trends southwest northeast. And the interesting thing about that is that it catches the, the cold fronts directly coming straight up the valley and is one of the reasons why the Yonkers Hook Valley and especially the Victoria Peak, which is at the top end of the valley, receives so much rainfall. 3,500 millimetres highest in South Africa. In the 1800s, there was a lot of settlers coming in and using wood, especially in the southern Cape forests. And conservators, even at that stage, were concerned about depletion of forests. So they started to look around for exotic species to replace them. And they brought in eucalyptus from Australia, and they did bring in the black wattle, but that had another use, you know, for tannins. And then the um, pinus species from Mediterranean and from North America, and started planting those out. And by even as early as 1900s, farmers were getting concerned because they noticed that their streams were declining below the plantations. And that built up into uh, a, a real concern, which was taken to the 1935 Fourth Empire Forestry Conference, which is held here in Cape Town. The Fourth British Empire Forestry Conference assembled on the 2nd of September 1935 for a five-week tour of South Africa. The Secretary for Agriculture and Forestry, Dr. Phil Yun, spoke on the question of the influence of afforestation on water supply about which a controversy had arisen, especially with regard to the use of exotics, notably the eucalypts, and to a lesser extent the pines. They asked the conference for an authoritative opinion. They um, acknowledged the problem and agreed to a, a program of research, hydrological research, which was initiated here. And in 1935, that year, they started building infrastructure in this catchment. So we've been monitoring since 1935, hydrological response of plantation forestry. And they, we had about um, nine catchments and 27 rain gauges set out around the whole catchment. And that has been a, a great scientific research, which was acknowledged worldwide because it was one place where we got solid results and we showed quite fairly conclusively the impact of plantations on water. We apply certain rules of thumb. In here where we grow pines, the, the water use is about 300 to 400 millimeters per year. That's a rainfall equivalent. So it's, it's using up the equivalent of 400 millimeters of rainfall, which doesn't come out in the, in the streams. we've done it is through setting up what we call paired catchment experiments and and what you do is you find the, your pristine catchment and you build your monitoring infrastructure in there and you you monitor it over several years to see how they both respond to the same rainfall input and then you plant up one of them and you use the other as the control and you measure the difference that you would expect the other one to have behaved based on what it would have been. And using the other control, you can determine what the reduction uh, that's driven by the plantation forestry. So that's been going on, you know, ever since 1935. Now, unfortunately, the government was the, the promoter of the research and paid for it and they have withdrawn their funding now, so it's come to an end, which is very unfortunate because the data set that we've got from this is priceless. Langrafia here is the control catchment and has never been planted up to trees. This is a, a research weir and it's a what we call a thin plate sharp crested weir with a special hydraulic characteristics. So we measure in that little house the height of the water coming over the notch. By continuous measurement here, over years we can understand what's coming through the down the street. Fortunately this kind of this kind of instrument here if you look at the sediment in the pool here, 
it uh, should be a big pool of water, but with the fire, it's altered the hydraulic characteristics of the catchment. And after the fire and the heavy rains, a lot of soil came down and has got trapped in here. Exactly the same setup, and most of the sediment has already been captured higher up, so it hasn't come in here. But you can see that there must be a high level of nutrients coming in here now, because it's full of algae, which is not a, not a normal situation. It's been released from the fire. Internationally, these names like BC Flay and Langrafia have have resonance. You know, all over the world, you'll find reference to these experiments. This kind of thing was replicated all around the country, so we had other um, experimental stations at Cathedral Peak in KwaZulu-Natal, in the, in the foothills of the Natal Drakens, and near Tsanin, and near Sabi, at, at a place called Witklip, and Mukubalan, and we had one near George. Those didn't um, last as long as this one did, but some of those concentrated on the impacts of eucalyptus on runoff. And the eucalyptus have been shown to be quite a lot more prolific in their water use. So much so that you could bank on about 600 millimeter rainfall equivalent from eucalyptus. But in one or two cases in Sanin, the catchment dried up completely. And the stream flow didn't reappear until four years after clear filling. And the implication of that is that it mined the soil water. So there was a fairly deep soil profile full of soil moisture, so it used up the rainfall that was coming in as well as the existing soil moisture, which would have originally gone into the stream. So it took four years, four years for that soil profile to re-establish itself before it started flowing again. <music>